this was my trusty bedroom TV for many, many years. And for some bizarre reason, when I went to the Swansea Science Festival and was lucky enough to meet Professor Alice Roberts, I used my one opportunity to speak to her to waffle about this TV. More precisely, there is a link, there is a sciencey link there, honest. Uh, Professor Alice Roberts was talking about how she was honoured to get the chance to give a Royal Institution Christmas lecture, having grown up watching them. And then that started my mind wandering on to the fact that this TV is the one that I watched my first Royal Institution Christmas lectures on. And I waffled about, you know, I had an aerial on the top, the aerial's sort of falling off there. But I had little marks on my shelves where I'd move the aerial to a different place because the channel that the Royal Institution Christmas Lectures were on at the time was in a slightly different place, so I had to move the aerial. And there were no such things as time shifting or even tuning into more than one channel at once on this TV. At least you could watch one channel at a time. Pretty much the same now with, it, with TVs, you only really watch one channel at a time. But you could only tune in one channel at a time, you tuned it on this dial here. And if you didn't manage to tune in in time, you missed the programme, that was it. There was no, uh, it took me years to be able to afford to get a video recorder. Um, that's the nearest I had time shifting at the time. So, yeah, I found this in storage and I thought, well, it's, uh, I get nostalgic when I find old stuff as well. I felt a bit sad that I'm not using it anymore because I've got a much bigger, relatively speaking, colour flat screen TV which I now don't watch because everything I want to watch is on the tablet. So even this bedroom TV, which is far newer, is not really getting used for other things. Um, but, yeah, I tweeted and uh, said, look, I found this TV, uh, tagged in Alice Roberts, tagged in Swansea Uni, of course, because I got to see her at the Swansea Science Festival. They're not paying me for this. I'm just, I just, except they gave me loads of free bags. So there you go. Bit of a plug for next year's festival. Um, yeah, I just decided to tweet about this, tweet a picture, and tweet a very condensed version of the story, tagged Alice Robertson, as I say, tagged Swansea Uni, and tagged the Royal Institution, and they actually tweeted back to me and said, ha, does it still work? Now, for most people, that would be a yes or no question. You plug it in, turn it on, does it still work? But this is me we're talking about now. So I started, my mind started wondering, I thought, oh, how cool would it be? If I could get my Raspberry Pi, which has also been sitting around for years doing nothing because I'm, you know, I've got all these great ideas, but then never actually seem to get around to doing stuff. Um, this is one of the original Model B Raspberry Pis from 2011. So I thought, oh, this would be really cool. Just put that in. It's got a composite video output, so that makes it easy. And I just happen to have lying around, as you do, a programmable universal modulator, which, if you don't know what this does, this might take a bit of explaining, actually. Um, we've got digital TV now, and they actually use the same frequencies as analog TV used to, but obviously it's broadcast in digital, so you need a digital box to tune into it, and it gets the picture in a totally different way. Whereas uh, these TVs, well, you tune them in manually, and um, this box basically makes up for the fact we don't have analog TV anymore. So this produces an analog TV signal only through the cable. It doesn't transmit anything. That would probably be, you probably need a license for that to transmit stuff. So, so it just transmits, it basically makes a fake, fake TV signal um, from a composite video input or a SCART. Uh, SCART might need some explaining, but uh, anyway, loads of great videos online or websites. You can do your own research, I'm sure. I'm trying to keep this short as I can make it. So it's got an antenna output and I'm plugging that into the TV in place of the TV aerial. Because if you plug the TV aerial into this TV, well, you just get snow. Nothing would happen. Not snow the weather. Snow. Yeah. It, it, nothing would tune in on it, basically. Um, so uh, that's what I did. I had to go at doing that. Um, no, I could have got the Raspberry Pi to produce a signal and just output it on the screen, but that wouldn't have been very interesting. I thought, how cool would it be if I went really anachronistic, really out of time, really played with our sense of time and uh, tuned in the 2018, the most recent at the time of the making of this video, uh, the 2018 Christmas lecture on this TV, as if I was tuning into it back in the day. Um, not as simple as 
I thought it would be because while while I got this working, oh, it, was, it was painfully slow. Uh, I downloaded the latest operating system, forgetting that this is from two thousand and eleven, um, and so, well, um, I I won't quote any specific examples, but uh, imagine the most painfully slow loading experience you've ever had on a computer. Multiply that by ten, and um, it was like even moving the mouse just. It went to a, it was using a hundred percent of its processing power to move the mouse and uh, opening the web browser just crashed it. So I thought, okay, I'll go on to the website and download an old operating system for it, one that would have actually come with it when I bought it. Uh, and then it was, oh, it was lightning speed. It was great. It was like it was back in the old days again. It was working just as it did. Uh, went onto the Royal Institution's website. And it just wouldn't load the video at all. It, uh, some sort of weird error. Not a bug necessarily, but just some sort of weird error that's to do with it being an old browser. So they'll go, hey, hey, all right, well, let's, let's get somewhere in the middle. Let's get an operating system that's newer. Not the newest, but somewhere in between. And that seemed to work okay. Opened up the browser. No, it just, it just wasn't going to work. At first I thought that the uh, video... The, the website that the videos are hosted on was down and so I left it overnight and came back the next day and I thought oh, well, I'll just try it when the website's up but then there was nothing wrong with the website the website was working fine it's just unfortunately the browser on this was a no-go so I thought well okay that's a shame um I didn't really have anything with the composite video output on it I did have um a VGA oh, I've got it here but uh, I did have a VGA converter, so you could get a VGA output from a laptop. Um, just standard monitor output before, you know, HDMI's, uh, HDMI inputs have been more common now. But uh, it, it would output a VGA and turn it into this, which you could just plug into the front of the TV. Or back, or a video player. So I could have had a composite video input um, from a laptop, but I don't know where I've put that. I've lost that. Um... So then I thought, well, I don't want to give up on this, but it can get more ridiculous. It really can. <laughs> so what I did was I uh, had a dig around on the internet. I actually needed another one of these adapters for something else, or a similar adapter to this for something else. So I found on eBay um, one of these adapters, and it turns, it's a bit back to front really. <laughs> you can imagine maybe wanting to uh, hook something that's got a composite or a SCART input into a HDMI so that you can watch old kit on a new TV. This is exactly the other way around. This is a HDMI and it's converting the HDMI into composite. And I thought, oh, we can get even more ridiculous than that. So I got my Chromecast, <laughs> plugged it into this, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it sort of works. So we've got, um, sadly the Raspberry Pi couldn't cut it, we have, um, I just got my my tablet to screen mirror to this nearly 40 year old black and white TV. It sort of works. Sadly the vertical hold on this is um, more than a little not working. But weirdly it squashed the image vertically. So that, uh, I knew there was going to be a problem basically, the Chromecast is expecting a widescreen TV uh, with a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, if, uh, if you're um, familiar with aspect ratios, it's basically, basically most screens now are 16 to 9 ratio, wide, wide screens, wider than they are tall, whereas TVs like this are of a 4 to 3 aspect ratio, which means it's four units that way, three that way. If if this was four centimetres wide, which it isn't, it's clearly not more than that. If it was four centimetres wide, then it would be three centimetres high. And it's so-called square, but of course that's not really square. It's rectangular, but not as rectangular as a widescreen. Anyway, waffling. Um, so the output of the Chromecast is 16.9. And as far as I know, there's no way to change that. On modern TVs, or even newer TVs than this one, rather, you can change the aspect ratio and so it'll squash the image. It won't change the size of the picture to you, obviously, but it'll squash the image down. This one's just squashing it down because it's broken. 
but weirdly it's squashing it down by just the right amount that it looks about right on screen. So I'm not necessarily saying that the TV's too happy about it, but it wasn't making any weird noises, so I'm glad of that. It's not broken. 37 years old and connected to a far more modern HD, it's not going to be HD on the screen, HD interface. There we are.